Howdy. So Diaphone made a video talking about how to deal with Yumi Adachi, and it's really good. You should definitely check it out. It covers a lot of the, the details and stuff like that, but I wanted to hit on a few things that he missed a little bit on, or to expand on thoughts that he presented in the video. So right off the bat, I wanted to note that the for Solo Adachi was notes for dealing with Beziodyne for push block, right? So in the video, it's noted that he would only recommend push blocking in this or situation where whenever towards the very end of it, so that way you're able to get... One of the first things I want to talk about is about push blocking Beziodyne towards the end. This isn't a bad call, but it does leave you open for the potential of getting TR TRM'd or whatnot. Obviously, this is going to be from against a bot, so it's not going to be more, the most uh, accurate for in terms of reacting to push block and whatnot, but you can most definitely, from experience, react to a push block and TRM somebody that's push blocking towards the end of Beziodyne. I would personally recommend not push blocking during Beziodyne, because his threat, whenever you... If you were to look at the situation, just from this alone, right? You have the beam there, he has no more access to Persona Normals. The only thing he gets here is Falling High-Low. In terms of like actual mix-up, right? So you can go for that, or you can obviously go for like Empty Jump Low. But in terms of he stays grounded, he has a low, and he has no access to the Command Throw anymore. So there's almost no reason to push block him from this situation. Going into the, the Empty Jump High-Low situation, right? Then you could push block. Then is that's the exact moment I would recommend push blocking. Because in this situation, right, it can be a little bit hard to tell if he's going to go for the empty jump high low in this situation. So what you can do instead is the moment he jumps, you could just push block him out. And even if they were to say go for like BZO falling air dash, kind of like what he hit on the video, the, the air dash is not going to be very quick. Right? That's going to be, like, one of the better timings for it. And you're still going to be out of range. So, whenever the moment they jump push block, the, if they're staying grounded, I don't recommend push blocking. Because the only threat that they have is going to be a low or TRMEU for push blocking, if you're getting a little bit predictable with it. So, going into push blocking his Persona Normals, you don't really need to do this this often. The only time I would recommend is that if you really wanted to push block 5B, because you do have the threat of the cross up there, which granted is kind of, it is definitely reactable, but you know, obviously it kind of varies. And there are like little tricks to it. Like if you hold board out of it, you can uh, get out of it in certain situations. Or if you uh, are willing to take a gamble and you aren't, if you're expected to not go for delay 5BB, you can't jump out. But generally speaking, you don't really need to push block Adachi a lot, but this is just one point that I'd recommend if you are afraid of dealing with this because in this situation where it's like a good cross up it will lose to just run buttons right going into his punishes on Azeodyne it will vary based on your positioning and whatnot so he uses the Akatsuki super a bunch for the situation so if I were to go for instant air dash back and go to this situation right I would get counter hit and that is just genuinely a punish for Azeodyne, assuming you're getting it like frame one, right? But if you do like the air dash version at this height, you probably... No, you actually don't. So in a lot of these situations, you if it's part of the air version, you're going to be fine. Like, well, the Dachi is going to be fine. You're going to get screwed. So you want to be careful on if they're doing it grounded or not grounded. Like, even at this range, I think grounded probably barely whiffs. Yeah. So this is like the max range for the the Akatsuki Super at least to connect, yeah. So, but then very like varying timings and whatnot for your aerial version to punish it. It's a good tool to have, but just keep that in mind. So one thing I could greatly recommend against Adachis is that if you go for if they go for a Zeodyne, you could dash block. So like in this situation, like you aren't gonna be able to get like a real punish for a lot of characters, but you're able to build so much ground between these like Azeodynes. Right? So you're able to get really close, and if you're even like a faster character like Yumi, in a lot of these situations, you're gonna be forcing the Adachi to respect at going for Azeodynes at this range, which is very common. 
So using your long range tools and using your movement to dash block or if, depending on the spacing, if it's like this sort of spacing, yeah, like they can't move at that spot anymore. They can try jumping out, but you basically are forcing your turn at that point. So dash blocking is a really strong tool to get in on a dodge. He's just going for the Azio Dides. So to hit on some notes that he made about Azio 9 6P, Bzo 9 Active Switch, you know, everybody's favorite part of uh, the Yumi Adachi team. So this comboing from the grounded version is going to be distance based for the most part. It's a little bit tighter than the air version to connect. But for example, it's like here you can see it's going to connect. And yeah, like I got hit. Uh, but if they're a little bit closer, if they just do a very point blank one, then it's going to be uh, not comboable, as we can see there. In regards to jumping out of the situation, you almost 100% can every time. If you super jump forward and air dash, you should be able to just get out of that situation with most any character with good air mobility. So Adachi can do it, most characters with a Persona 4 air dash can do it, Yumi can do it, etc. Characters that are faster are going to be able to do this. The only thing that, if you're a slower character, you do have to hold it, which kind of sucks. If you have air stall like Ruby, Blake, so on, you can just go, like, you could just go to the skies and retreat out of it. Rachel gets to wind completely out of the situation. So that's something to note, is that, and if, the biggest thing to, about this, though, is that spacing. If you're full screen and you try to go for this, even for, like, fast characters, you're gonna get, and uh, you're gonna be blocking the BZ Odine at this point. So what you want to do is you want to fall with a button to try to break the persona. This does leave you open to anti-airs, but it's something to mix in because if the Yumi player is going for DPs and stuff like that, and you're just trying to fall into it, you're gonna be getting like you're gonna get comboed for it. So you might as well put your spine out at times to break the persona, and in case that they are not ready to try to anti-air in that situation, then you're getting your everything started. Or if they're running with it, like if they're doing a a recording similar to like this the more classic where like they're running at you with it right you're gonna be able to clip them a little bit obviously this is using Adachi JB but even for something like Yumi you can see where they have to react to the situation and anti-air otherwise you're gonna get stuffed Even in situations where the DP connects, it's so much less of a threat if there's no more Bezeodyne to really go with it. In regards to the free burst point, whenever it comes down to the Bezeodyne active switch, you have to be reacted to the Bezeodyne and you have to be pretty quick about it because Adachi can also just block there. And if you're just like out of habit just going for burst, you can just die. So you have to be quick with a reaction. And this is where the, the difficulty is, in my opinion, because of the fact that if they, if you are a little bit slow on a, a Bezeodyne burst, you can just die for it. Because Yumi blocks you and then you go for something here. So like there, for example, if you're just a little bit late, uh, you're going to be eating a ton of damage. To be fair, there, if you're determined to burst the situation, or if you even, like, say, get hit by it, there's no other characters you really need to look out for. Or no other like real tools you need to look out for in this situation. So just keep your eyes on the opponent, like on the Yumi Adachi team and or the opponent's team. And then you'll just be able to see when they do Bezeodyne and burst on the Bezeodyne. Bezeodyne is gonna be like the popping up of the persona is gonna be your reaction point. You wanna make sure that you're actually reacting to the burst because if you were to go in on a blocking Adachi, you're going to eat a lot of unnecessary damage. Yeah. And then they get free Oki off of it. So I just wanted to re reiterate that point. Make sure that you are reacting to the Bezeodyne startup and then bursting, not just bursting because you know the Bezeodyne is coming. That's what's noted from Diaphone, but I want to just really reiterate that because I've had many good players will see this and then we'll just burst right there, even though nothing's coming and it will eat a ton of damage and I get to get rid of their burst and I get to go for Bezeodyne Oki. Uh, so it's really just like, I want to make sure that you are aware to react before you just burst. This also, the same concept applies for trying to bust out with a super. 
This also comes down to reversal supers. It can be very difficult to, at times to visually confirm the Bezeodyne coming out and actually able to get the punish, but if you're just letting it rock, sometimes you're just gonna get it like, like I mean, like right there it's good, but I did not react to the Bezeodyne. Uh, and it can be hard to react to the Zeodyne at times because of the fact that the 6P is already making so much progress that it gives you such little time to actually go for it. Again, depending on your spacing. If you're full screen and they go for it, you can react to that pretty easily. But then, if they are just letting it rock, like, you will die or you will get- you will give the- the player advantage for no real reason. So just keep that in mind. Make sure that you're actually reacting, and then if you do end up blocking the 6P, just, just try to your best to get out of that situation with whatever character-specific tools you have, or stuff like that. At longer ranges, I seriously can't stress enough, just go for the super jump forward and then go from there. Uh, it can be annoying if you uh, super jump forward, because even still, you're going to get caught in the Bezeodyne. But it's, it's very difficult. If you have a full-screen super on one of their characters, assuming they don't have cross-combo. So, example would be like here, Yumi is able to just mash super and at least call out the the Yumi there, right? So Yumi's taking some damage. In the same regard, if I were to go to the Bezeodyne setup and actually mash the super because the 6P makes it very difficult to actually call it out, Adachi's taking the damage now. Reversal supering them in CC, like if they have CC is going to be a huge threat because of the fact that you can see here, I'm able to CC on a reaction, I'm able to get the full route. And they actually recover in time to where, assuming that they don't have the resources, are put in the same situation again. So, don't reversal super if your super can't actually punish most of the time. If the, it can make them second guess and uh, from autopiloting and whatnot, but it's actually super easy for the Adachi Yumi player just to use this situation and use like common matchup knowledge and just explode people for it. One thing that's not covered in the video is a strong option for Yumi point, which is going to be something like this. And this is super strong because of the fact that A, this is all a block string. Uh, if you actually block the first thing, so you just can't do anything about it. It catches jump out. If you get hit, depending on your range for the 5B, sometimes 5B will just combo, uh, which is super good. And because of the fact that Yumi's 5B is disjointed against some characters, it's going to be DP safe. Obviously, not against all characters. It's super, super strong. You could definitely push block one of the fireballs, but it's such... You have to commit the bar for Yumi not to get in at that point, and you're resetting to neutral, where she just does it again. It's a very strong situation. Uh, you, plus, you'll see oftentimes Yumi is going for stuff like this. Not necessarily that exactly, but going for like neutral jumps with, or like putting a Dachi 6P in the far back and just jumping with it. Something that I recommend to dealing with this is going to be uh, two options. Either whenever you see Yumi jump, jump with her. Because, like, you're able to call out the assist sometimes, and other times you're just able to really just punish the Yumi for, for trying to go for, like, air birds. Right? The other option would be, if you're faster on the ground, you can just run up and start hitting the, uh, the opponent. Like, hitting the assist. So, this is just a good thing to know. That was funny. Yeah, so run up, hit the... I know I do this with Adachi a ton. Because they, the auto-correct. But yeah. Running under the the point to just go and snipe Adachi is super good. Anyways, Diaphone and the crew did a fantastic job putting together all the resources and making that video, so shouts out to them. Please go subscribe to them, follow them, stuff like that. Uh, make some good content. I've got a few other videos in the works right now. I just uh, I just saw that video and wanted to make something quick for this. I know that there's not been a lot of uploads lately. I have been incredibly busy and I am and I've also got like three different video ideas coming out. So uh, when they come out, they come out. And yeah, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. The algorithm. Watch Diaphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah.